Kelly here, and it has been a minute since I've done a video, but I'm very excited to be joining Newton's Nook to help them celebrate their release as their guest designer. And today I'm going to be using uh, Wagon of Witches and a new set called Hello Spring, which is super cute. It's got little eggs and uh, two different bunnies and flowers. So I'm starting on uh, some sea glass paper from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm stamping also from Simon Says Stamp in Lake Shores. I wanted a tone on tone pattern um, that was going to be the background, but it just seemed like the pattern was too big. So then I pulled out the, I think this is called Holiday Smooches set. It is Holiday Smooches. Um, and I just pulled out the solid heart to kind of fill in um, those eggs so that the pattern didn't look as large. Like I guess it just seems. Um, like it was too large of a scale for my card. So I've got all the background done and I'm going to set that aside. We're not going to end up using that, so it doesn't really matter, but I left it in here to show you um, everybody's card is a work in progress. Like we're all making it up as we go along, so don't feel like you're the only one. So I picked out the bunny that had the um, little bouquet of tulips. I thought he was super cute and I wanted to use the um, sentiment, some bunny loves you. So I just, I don't know, I thought it would be adorable to have like a little scene where this bunny was bringing you flowers and a wagon full of eggs. Um, and that is what we're using from the uh, Wagon of Wishes set. We are, we're using the wagon. So I just pulled out some Distress Ink and I'm just really lightly um, going to add some color to the sky and to the uh, grass. I'm not being heavy handed. I'm not even really going over my bunny. I just wanted like a little halo of color to help make him the focal point to kind of draw your eye in. And then I'm going to use the Twisted Citron for the grass. And this is really good, especially if you're coloring with Copics, which I'm going to be. Um, and I'm going to draw in some grass, but putting down a base color with uh, whether you use Distress Ink or an Ink Blender and Dye Ink, however you choose to do that, it will really save on your Copic ink because you've already kind of got a base uh, color that you're working with. So I have stamped my bunny, I've masked him off, and now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the wagon that's going to contain our eggs. And I could have cut a mask to mask the whole thing, but the only part I really needed masked was the top, or um, the bottom of the wagon so that I could stamp the eggs inside. So I just cheated and used a post-it note. Like I already had them on my desk and it basically took little to no effort, and I'm a big fan of little to no effort. <laughs> um, so I stamped out some eggs and then I masked these as well so I could stamp some behind. And I thought I was going to stamp more, um, but five turned out to be enough to fill it. And then it was also working in odd numbers, which is more appealing to the eye than even. So I did my five and then I was just, I left it. I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. Our wagon's pretty full um, and they're eggs. It's not like they'd just be balanced on top of each other there, right? So now we're going to reveal the magic, the uh, all the stamped images, taking my masks off, and then we have our little, um, what is this, what am I working on, Nina, um, Nina Solar White, 80, 80 pound, 80, 110 pound, I'm a liar, 110 pound cardstock, and uh, I just picked out some C's and um, one R to do, um, the ears and the nose. I wanted him to be a white bunny. So you've heard me say this before if you watch my videos. When you're coloring white, you're just adding in where the shadows are going to be. And because everything else is really white in this image, when you're putting this down, uh, he's going to look really, really gray. But don't be frightened. He's going to look white at the end. Um, I just added a couple of little details uh, above his nose to um, kind of give that some definition. And then, uh, you know, where the flowers would be against his face would be darker. And I'm just using a uh, light hand and um, little flicks of color to kind of put those in. Like I said, you're coloring a white object, so you want there to be white left. You're just adding in where the shadows would be. So, yeah, like his toes, I did a couple little lines. And this C5 is my darkest color, and I only added it where it would be the absolute darkest. I didn't add it all over like I did with the other colors. I prefer to work with my Copics darkest to lightest, and then lightest to darkest. Uh, however, this time, I didn't really feel the need to go back through the C3, since I didn't put the C5 everywhere. So I just went back to the C1. 
Now, if you ever feel like you've gotten too heavy handed with your shadows when you're um, coloring a white object, you just get that zero marker to colorless blender and it will come in and save the day. So here I felt like um, I lost some of the highlight on his arms and his feet and the tips of his ears. So I'm just going to hit that with the zero and it'll kind of clean it up for me, brighten everything back up. The R20 um, is going to go in his ears and then his nose. And then I decided, um, oh, I blended it back out with the zero too so that it would fade to like a really light pink. I decided to add a little bit of pink to his belly. Now I know like out in the real world of things that there's aren't bunnies running around with little pink bellies, but I thought it was cute, so I did it anyway because it's a card and it's not a real bunny and I can do whatever I want. So now we're going to move on to um, the actual coloring of the uh, wagon. It doesn't matter to me where this wagon goes. Any wagon stamp I use, any wagon period, is it's red. Like in my head, it's a little red wagon. It cannot be any other color. Uh, that's my own personal hang up. You can make your wagon whatever color you want, but mine, mine's a red wagon. So, but I knew I was working with pastels. So normally when I'm doing something red, I usually pick R32, R35, R29, and R59. And this gives me like a really good true red color. I tried to keep this one a little lighter, so I left off the R59 and I added in the R20 because the rest of everything is going to be pastels and I didn't want this like big bold wagon just sucking up all the attention from all the rest of this totally adorable stamped images. So I tried to pay attention to that. I still feel like it is quote unquote red, but it's just not as bold as maybe I would normally go. And here I'm just um, doing the same thing. I'm doing flicks of color, um, you know, really light hand. Reds are hard to clean up, so you want to make sure you're careful about your edges there. And um, I just added it where, like, the shadows would be the darkest. I left the center as kind of like my highlight. Now, this is every C marker I own, every single one of them. Why, you ask? Because we're going to do a little bit of gray, but then we're also going to do black. So the... I don't even know what you call the hubcaps. The wagons have hubcaps. This one has hubcaps. I don't know what else to call them. So I'm doing the hubcaps in my lighter gray colors. I'm using a C1, a C3, a C5. Then the C3 is going to be my darkest color for my wheels, which are going to be black. I left my highlight on the wheels kind of in the top right-hand corner uh, because I'm a huge fan of shadows, and I wasn't really sure if I was going to be adding them to this or not. I didn't end up adding it. I didn't feel like it needed it, but just in case, I wanted to have them in the correct position for my shadows to be down and to the left, because that's how I prefer to draw. So I'm just going through, doing the same thing from the C3 out to the C9, and then from the C9 back into the C3. And you'll see, even though we've never actually used black, the wheels do appear black, just because of the way that we've shaded them. But I'm use my R35 to color in the, um, what were that, bolts, nuts, bolts, what's in the center of the hubcap? They, they're called something. Lug nuts? That's not right. I mean, that's what they're called on wheels, but I'm sure that's not what they're called on wagons. Anywho, so now we're, <laughs> we're moving on to the, um, bouquet. I picked my favorite green combination, and I'm going in and adding in those details. Now, there are two other leaves in this bouquet that I am oblivious to right now because I was concentrating so much on coloring the stems. But I will go back and get them, I promise. I don't think I left that part in because it seemed, like, redundant. And then here, after these are done, I'm going to add in the grass. Now, this is not very time-consuming, and you're looking at it and you're probably thinking, like, how am I supposed to recreate that? She's just smacking some... Copic markers right on the paper and there's no real technique to it and you would be correct. There is no real technique to it. I literally press the marker to the table and swoop up because um, that's what grass blades look like. They're fatter on the bottom, skinnier on the top. They're, don't overthink it. You can do it. I promise. I added a little bit of shading underneath the um, wagon wheels and the bunny's feet because where they would be standing on them, those you know, there wouldn't be necessarily blades of grass sticking up 
they would be kind of smushed down. So I grabbed my um, YG67, thinking it was the 17, and then I realized that was like super dark. So I didn't put that um, as everywhere as I thought. Uh, but it's okay. Not everything's perfect. It doesn't always go as planned, and it turned out fine in the end. So I'm doing the YG03. I'm, for the grass, for me especially, I always like to go in that um, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, because those lighter colors uh, help to blend in the darker ones. So our grass is done and in place, and now we're going to go ahead and move on to the eggs. Originally I did two colors um, on the eggs, and then I just, I was like, no, I need three. I don't know why three is like the magic number for me, but that's what I felt like. And so then the same thing with the eggs, I colored them so that the highlight was in the top right hand corner. And I tried to stick to fairly pastel combinations. Um, I don't, spring just is, I mean, spring is pastels. I wore lavender pants to work the other day and one of my coworkers was like, embracing the spring colors, huh? It's like even boys know. Even boys know that pastels are for spring. So I wanted to kind of have a visual triangle for each color. Uh, my paper is that sea glass, so doing one tulip, this soft blue, and one egg, and then the paper will give me that triangle. And I was thinking about it all the way through for every color. The dots on the blue one I wanted to be white, but not stark white because there are some shadows. So I used a C1 and C3 just to add in a little bit of shadows where I thought that, that they would be the darkest. You know, how the egg's leaning to the left. And then um, here, it's basically the R20 and the R32 I used elsewhere. You want to hit like a continuity of color. So they shouldn't be fighting with each other. If you're going to use um, pinks, like try to keep it the same color family of pinks throughout your whole card. Here I'm using, they are R's. Um, but they end up being a bit more soft. And then there with the visual triangle, I, you, it depends on how you look at it, I guess. The ears are pretty soft, so it's more like the wagon, the egg, and the tulip. For the um, violet, I picked out a couple of these. The VO4 is pretty strong, so I only used just a little bit of it. And here I just kind of switched it up and made the... Um, polka dots purple instead of white. I didn't want them all to look exactly the same and then we're going to add a little bit of detail later to kind of make them more decorative Easter eggs. Um, a lot of times you will see like just really elaborate patterns on Easter eggs. The one in this set has polka dots on it and while I do think that you could mask them or wipe them off, um, I thought that they were cute so I just kind of embraced them. But if you wanted to switch it up you totally could. So here I did the ribbon wrapping, the tulip, and the egg, and then those are my three um, for my violets. And here I went ahead and just finished it off. Um, I figured it was getting pretty uh, unentertaining. Is that a thing? Is that a bird? Boring? Un yeah, I guess boring is the opposite of unentertaining. Um, oh, hello. Drop my microphone. Anywho. Um, so I'm adding, I'm using a white gel pen to add in some details. I did some diagonal stripes on the one egg. I did dots on the flowers. I did dots on this pink one. And then I wanted to add something to the white eggs, but I was like, this, I'm not, what am I doing here? So I actually pulled out a souffle pen, which is called it, they call them embossing pens because they raised, um, they dry raised. And I just drew on some horizontal lines. <laughs> oh, don't you love when a word escapes you? I drew on some horizontal lines and then I thought that it would be super cute to add a bit of detail to this wagon and give it like a basket weave pattern. So I just picked out a journaling pen and I'm drawing on um, that basket weave. Just I thought it would be cute because like Easter bunnies are like they bring eggs in baskets and they're woven. So I thought it would be cute to do to the wagon. Not your thing. Skip that part. My feelings aren't hurt. Here we're going to go ahead and move on to the sentiment because we've gotten all the details done. And um, I also outlined the image, the whole thing. I'm a big fan of um, outlining my images. So I used another journaling pen and just went through and outlined all the lines, got all of that together. 
and now here we are, and I'm putting it on the background, and I'm like, nah. It's cute, but it doesn't go. So then I flipped it over, and I thought, is that going to be enough? Don't mind me moving the camera all around on you. So what I ended up doing was, I first of all, A, did not start over with a new piece of paper, because I'm a cheap chicken. I flipped it over. The back's still good, yo. And then I put on the My Favorite Things um, Diagonal Stripe Stencil, and I'm using uh, tumbled glass distressing to rub that on. Now the stencil isn't quite large enough to cover the front of a um, A2 size card. So I did half of it and then I flipped it around so that I could move the stencil. This stencil is not very intricate. It's a you know very simple geometric pattern so it's super easy to line up. If you had something that was a little more um, don't mind my hair fuzzies there. Uh, if you had something that was a little more involved, it might be more difficult to do this, but I didn't have any issues. And now, there we are, and I'm much more happy with, I'm much more, ha I'm much happier um, with the way that that design looks. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting it together. I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere this um, closer to the top of my panel, and then I just felt like I wanted a little something, um, to kind of pull it together so I added just a super small strip of uh, lavender paper underneath and I chose lavender because it goes really well like setting off the green as well as matching um, the blue of course no card would be complete without some clear wink of Stella because everything needs shimmer so I put that on yeah, pretty much the whole thing pretty much the whole card the eggs the flowers the ears and then I did the strip of paper as well and that is the completed card, so thank you so much for joining me, and I am excited to share the rest of uh, Newton's Nook release with you guys. I hope you head over to the blog and check out the rest of the design team stuff. They're all very talented ladies. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you later. Bye.